Does Canada have the good feeling money like Australia? Yes. Yeah, it's all it's uh, all plastic. Yeah, we've got the if you yeah, it's plasticky money. If you consider yeah. that to be good, the good feeling it's money. It's very durable. Does yeah. it actually smell like maple? No. Um, no. Okay, well the, the hundreds. The hundreds have a bit of an antifreeze component smelling thing to them that smells. It's sweet. a little sweet, yeah. And you can definitely you can confuse <laughs> with maple syrup quite easily. Okay. Yeah, when um, Graham sent me to go set, get the pepper for the opening, uh, he just gave me a ten dollar bill, and I'm like, I don't want to fold this. Yeah. Like it feels too. Right. Yeah. Like, so I just like it was just like in a like kind of a C shape in my pocket. And I just kept my kept my hand on it. Yep. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't yep. know what to, how to do what to do with it. I've creased many a bill at this point myself, like oh, yeah. plastic mm -hmm. ones. Yeah. But yeah, it just felt too perfect. It was so crisp and perfect. I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to mark it. Oh, you can deface our money all day. It's fine. It's fine. You can throw, take it. Throw some toonies in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> Let's that, throw them at the so wall. I have a friend who worked, at, who's a, a mechanical engineer and happened to be working at a place that did um, extreme cold testing. Okay. So they had a, a liquid nitrogen, like, cold testing thing. So we, we tried to see if we could make a bill shatter. Ooh. And no. Oh, nice. No, yeah, they are, they are, Solid. Did That's you put, did you you put a toonie in it? To we see didn't if you try separate, with the toonie. Yeah. Separate the two parts? Yeah. That, you, that used to be a problem. I don't think that's been a problem. No. Like in the very first run, that was a problem. Yes. Yeah. The metallurgy, they meant they shrank at two different rates, right? Yes. Oh. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Our toonies are a $2 coin. They're kind of like pesos. They have an inner and an outer yeah. component. And I think there was like some worry about when that started happening and people noticed it was like, oh. It was for fun. It was for fun. But there was this worry of like, people are gonna split them in half and they're gonna take some of them to like, to like one bank and some to another bank to say, I need to get these replaced. They're gonna double their money. And it's no, like, we all know it was, it was not gonna happen. The things. No. It's like, you know, putting, putting your coins on a railroad track or squishing a penny or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. You know that thing's not money anymore. Do, do American hundred dollar bills still smell like cocaine? Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do they taste like? And they're usually covered in glitter. Oh. <laughs> Microplastics. <laughs> the uh, uh, when I was doing the, because I'm seeing here, New Zealand money is made in Canada, and like, yeah, there aren't that many presses around the world that will. I'm just will, saying, Australian money. I don't know, made in Canada, but made by the same people. Anyway. Yeah, there's a, so there's a, I don't know if this is the company that does it or not, but there is a company called Canadian Banknote uh, that briefly I did a bit of contracting at like a four steps removed for um, because they, I hope I have this all correct because it was kind of like, again, four steps removed. But my understanding was when Alberta was, Alberta has private driver's license uh, uh I don't want to call them clinics. What are they? Like they're they're like how we have ICDC here, where you go to get like your driver's right. license or ID or whatever. So they it's have, like the DMV, but it's privatized. Thank you. It's the DMV, but it's ah. privatized. Thank okay. you. That's what it is. The Department of Vital Statistics is still Albertan, and you can get Vital Statistics data through the uh, motor vehicle companies um, through through their like centers and whatnot. Anyway, but the way that works is that the government of Alberta still has control over that, so they they issue the cameras to take the photos. And they have the, the back-end systems and everything else, like the computer, you know, all that stuff is owned by the Alberta government, is my understanding. And they got to a point where, like, well, we're updating the driver's licenses in this province, and so that means we're also updating all the equipment. And so I was, this is when I was out of work, I, they, I, they reached out to me, uh, the company I used to work with, it was like, we need contractors to come in and, and do this installation all over the province, so we're going to hire, like, 10 people. And um, so my job was go pick up all the equipment. Usually you do two in a day. So you get all the equipment you need, put it in the back of your car, drive to one location that you're scheduled to do for the day, and you tear out all their equipment and you put in all the, all the new equipment and you have to calibrate it all. So they give you like the, the calibration cards and stuff that you can buy at London Drugs and stuff. So you get one of those and they you set everything up. You take a whole bunch of extra pictures of yourself um, and those get sent to Ottawa and then they get they were being reviewed by an actual person, which I don't know if they do that much anymore. But you had to be like, you had to like click on your eyes yeah. to be like, this is where the eyes are. If they aren't quite, if the computer couldn't figure it out, you have to actually click on the eyes and stuff. You have to make adjustments to like uh, contrast and everything else. Because you were essentially taking the equivalent of a passport photo. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're doing it, you know, they're gonna have it electronically, but it's saved with your record. And, uh, and then I found out that 
this same company is also the people who handle all the passports for the federal government as well. So similar technology all the way around, but I'm like, why can't the passport office take our goddamn photos then? <laughs> but, oh, you know, oh why, like, well, yeah. yeah. Why can't I walk into Service Canada, stand in front of a thing, go click and get my photos? Like, no, you have to bring your photos in to, and they have to take your photos and then they paste, paste like, them. Like, the yeah, they just want to read your forms and make sure you have all your information. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're a clerk. Yeah, they're so. not interested in trying to do a bunch of extra uh, yeah. things, which I can understand. Uh, but yeah, my, my job, because of where I was living in Alberta, because I was living in Olds, which is in the middle of nowhere. It's between Edmonton and Calgary. Yeah, but it's not in Edmonton or it's not in Calgary. Because it's between them. It's between the two. And that's an hour away from like Calgary. They would given me a bunch of places in Calgary to do. And I'd said, you know, there's a whole bunch of other driver's license offices, like motor vehicle offices, all in the middle of the province. Why don't you just give me those? And they're like, well, we've already decided. And then we had a big snowstorm and, and they're like, yeah, we can't send anybody out today. And I'm like, yeah, I can't come in from where I live because I'm stuck out here. And they're like, oh, that's a problem. I'm like, yeah. How about tomorrow when the blizzard is let up, I come in and pick up all of my everything. Like I pick up all the things I need to do. And if you guys can assign me just the ones in the middle of the province, I'll put my snow tires back on my car. This is like May. It's very weird. <laughs> and I will go drive around and, and install and calibrate. And they're like, sorry, you live where again? I'm like, I live in, we've been through this. I, I live in Olds. I'm in the middle of the province. I'm not near any major cities overall. Like, why do we have you coming to Calgary? <laughs> and I'm like, I told you multiple times. Never. You're, no, you're right. You're why? I don't know why. I guess I must ask. I don't know. Can you reassign me? Yeah, we'll totally reassign you. It's like, uh, <laughs> I had to go to Edmonton for my passport. Oh, God. It was an eight hour lineup. Yeah. Yeah. That's miserable. It's like, take a weekend to go down there. This is from when wow. you were living up further I'm north. Yeah. 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 We had to go to um, Atlanta, which was like six hours. It was either Atlanta or Miami. We're right, oh. we're in the middle, so it's literally six hours or six hours. And Colin's like, I lived in Miami. Let's go to Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah, Grand Prairie, which is a five hour trip from, uh, from Grand Prairie to Edmonton, it's five yeah. hours. If they just open like Service Canada, like a little Service Canada up there to just handle requests. Well, like you can do mail in passport stuff yeah. now. Now yeah. and well, like we can get the ten year passport too. So yeah. but this was just like, hey, it's like we're making our first four year passports ever or something like yeah. that. And yeah, so I had to go down to stand in Canada place for eight hours in line. Yeah. Yeah. Ours was a he need, Colin needed a rush on oh, it. Yeah. So yeah, we had to go to yeah, it's like these are your two options. Yeah. That was a fun day trip. Good boy. It was fun installing the driver's license cameras though because it did mean that like I was doing like I like to drive in Alberta because everything's really flat um, and sometimes the weather sucks but whatever I don't know what it's like to drive on a very flat road there, there was a lot of uh, it was a lot of this it really was a lot of this there was a couple segments where they got real curvy which was fun but it was mostly this but did your car pull to the right uh, no, I, I fortunately, when I went in and got everything else done, they balanced everything as well. So it was like, I'm not worried about running off the road and they, uh, um, and also if you like, they had me drive all the way to the Eastern border of the province and they're like, there is no way you're getting back in time. So you get to stay overnight if you want to, like we've, we've booked you a hotel room and everything else at the super eight. So that's where you're staying tonight. And, and then like that happened a couple of times and so when I finished all mine like got everything done they were like oh fantastic great good job and then they called me like a week later and said can you come to Edmonton and finish up some other installs and I'm like I, I guess I can and like great we'll put you up at a hotel and everything else I'm like why me you and he's like because you were probably the best performer of everybody that we had in the group so we want to have you come up and finish the ones in Edmonton and I'm like that would be great because I'm going to use this as an opportunity to come see my friends who live in Edmonton yeah. it's like because Jeff messed the whole thing up yeah. Yeah. I thought I was being a massive pain in the ass and apparently no, they're like no you did an excellent job we want you to come do more of this stuff I'm like okay awesome that sounds great but it was not a job I could keep for like months it was a job that you had for two weeks and then that was all mm -hmm. so it was whatever I used the money I made from that to buy my next car. Oh, nice. wow. Yeah. That car's in the junkyard now. That's <laughs> it's dead now. It's dead 